Welcome back, everyone. We're diving into something pretty unique today. Uh, it's Elizabeth's learning journey. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she took this course back in November 2024. It's called AI for ELT. And it was all about using artificial intelligence for teaching English. Interesting. Yeah, it was led by Dr. Nellie Deutsch. And our main source material for this deep dive is actually Elizabeth's video reflection, which she finished in January 2025. So we're really going to be seeing things from her perspective. Exactly. It's like we get to peek inside her head and see what she was thinking and feeling throughout this whole learning process, which I think is fascinating. And also, just to think about it, she finished the course in January, even though it started way back in November. Oh, wow. So she had a bit of a break in between. Yeah. Life kind of threw her a curveball or two. <laughs> you know how it goes. But she persevered. And I think that says a lot about her dedication to learning. Like learning doesn't always fit neatly into a schedule, right? Right. Because <laughs> life happens. Okay. So let's unpack this AI for ELP course a little bit. It was structured over four weeks, each week with a different theme. Like a step-by-step -step guide. Sort of. You start with introductions, just getting everyone familiar with the basics of AI in education. Some foundation. Yeah. And then it moves into AI storytelling. Yeah. Which I think is really cool because it taps into that power of narrative. And stories are so important for language learning. Absolutely. And then week three, that's where things get really interesting. What happened in week three? Well, that's the week where they really dove into the hands-on interactive tools. Mm -hmm. You know, things like Magic School and... You can just hear the excitement in Elizabeth's voice when she talks about this I week. think she had an aha moment. Totally. Have you ever had that experience where a specific activity just makes everything click for you? Oh, yeah. All the time. That's what keeps me coming back for more. I think those aha moments are so important. Me too. And I think it shows how powerful hands-on learning can be. It's not just about reading a textbook or listening to a lecture. It's about actually doing something, you know, experimenting, create. And Elizabeth definitely embraced that hands-on approach. She actually chose Moodle as her platform for hosting all the resources and activities she created throughout the course. Moodle. That's a pretty popular online learning platform, right? Yeah, it's like a digital classroom. And it shows that Elizabeth was thinking about applying what she was learning right from the start. You know, not just keeping it all theoretical. That's smart. It's one thing to understand the concepts, but it's another thing entirely to actually put them into practice. Exactly. And she even mentions a few specific AI tools that really caught her attention. Like what? Well, there's Hagan, which is pretty cool. It uses AI to create videos from text. She actually used it to make her intro video. Wow. So she was already jumping right into the AI world. Yeah. And then there's Riftbot, which is a tool designed specifically for recording reflections. So it's like having a personal AI assistant for your learning journey. Kind of. And these tools aren't just gimmicks. They're a reflection of a bigger trend in education. You know, this whole integration of AI into teaching and learning. It's changing the landscape for both teachers and students. Definitely. And Elizabeth wasn't just passively consuming content in this course. She was actively creating. Creating what? Well, for example, she talks about using Book Creator to craft a story. And she even incorporated feedback she got from Dr. Laura Molero, another expert in the field. Oh, wow. So it was a collaborative process. Exactly. And it shows how AI can be used to support not just individual learning, but also collaboration and feedback. Storytelling is such a powerful tool, too, especially for language learners. It helps you understand narrative structure and explore different perspectives and just engage with language in a more meaningful way. And it sounds like Elizabeth was really able to tap into that power through her work with Book Creator. Yeah, she really embraced the whole creative side of AI, which I think is awesome. It's not just about algorithms and data. It's about using these tools to express yourself and tell your story. And she didn't stop there. She dives into a whole bunch of different AI-powered activities and tools like Mizzou for creating chatbots and Notebook LM for making those personalized quizzes. And, of course, her beloved Magic School for designing interactive lessons. Wow, it's like she went on a whirlwind tour of the AI landscape. Yeah, and picked up some valuable skills along the way. And it sounds like she really enjoyed the experience. Oh, absolutely. You can just hear it in her voice. Yeah. She was so excited to be learning and trying new things, and she was really grateful for the supportive environment that Dr. Nellie Deutsch created in the course. That sense of community is so important, especially when you're exploring something new and potentially intimidating like AI. It makes you feel safe to experiment and make mistakes and learn from each other. And it sounds like Elizabeth really benefited from that. So we've got this incredible course designed to introduce educators to AI. 
a dedicated learner eager to explore and apply these new tools, and a supportive community where everyone's learning and growing together. And that's a recipe for success, don't you think? It definitely sounds like it. And I'm curious to hear more about what Elizabeth did with all this newfound knowledge and these powerful tools. Well, that's what we're going to dive into in the next part of our deep dive, so stay tuned. So Elizabeth's journey wasn't just about webinars and lectures. No, not at all. She really tried out these tools, you know, and like really made them her own. Oh, yeah. And she talks about how she felt a little hesitant at first to use Heijin. Heijin, that's the one that makes videos from text, right? Yeah, exactly. And she even said she started by using stock images and voices instead of her own. It's good that she shared that it makes it seem more real, you know? I agree. I think it's important to remember that everyone starts somewhere. You don't have to be an expert right away. Right. And she talks about how earning digital badges in the course gave her a sense of accomplishment. That's cool. Kind of like gamifying the learning process. Yeah. And those little things can make a big difference. It's like a little pat on the back, you know, keeps you motivated. Yeah. But she also says that her real motivation came from within. That makes sense. I mean, you have to be interested in the topic, right? Exactly. She was genuinely excited to be learning all this new stuff. To expand her teaching toolkit. Yeah. And she really emphasizes how valuable those live meetings were, you know, where participants could connect with each other and with Dr. Deutsch. I bet that was helpful, especially with a topic like AI that can feel pretty intimidating. Yeah. It's nice to have that human connection, even in the digital learning environment. It makes you feel less alone. Exactly. And she also talks about the support forums where people could ask questions and troubleshoot problems. Peer-to-peer -peer support is so valuable. Definitely. It creates that sense of community. So we've talked about how week three was a turning point for Elizabeth with all the hands-on stuff. Yeah. She really loved magic school. I can see why that tool has so much potential for creating engaging lessons. Yeah, she was clearly inspired by it. And she even started integrating Magic School activities with other platforms like H5P and Moodle. So she was really thinking about how to make all these tools work together seamlessly. Yeah, she was building a whole ecosystem for her teaching. That's impressive. And another activity that stood out to her was creating a chatbot doctor using Mizzou. Mizzou, that's the one for building chatbots without any coding, right? Right, exactly. That sounds like fun. Yeah, and it's a great way for students to practice conversational skills. In a low-pressure environment. Exactly. They can make mistakes and learn at their own pace. So it seems like Elizabeth got a lot out of the AI for ELT course. Oh, definitely. She gained a lot of knowledge and skills, and she was able to apply it all to her teaching. Which ultimately is the goal, right? Absolutely. But her journey didn't end there. Oh, there's more. Yeah, she actually puts all these learnings into option in her own classroom. Now, that's what I'm really interested in hearing about. Okay, so we're back and ready to uncover the final chapter of Elizabeth's AI journey. The grand finale. Exactly. We've heard about her experience in the course of her experiments with AI and her passion for using these tools in her teaching. But now the question is, what did she actually do with all this knowledge? Right. How did she make it real for her and her students? Yeah. Did she like completely overhaul her lessons or what? Well, she didn't just stop at the course. She really wanted to apply what she would learned. To see how it would actually work in the classroom. Yeah. And she was very careful about choosing the right tools. You know, the ones that matched her goals and her students' needs. So it's a strategic move, not just random experimentation. Exactly. She understood that AI is a tool and like any tool, it has to be used thoughtfully. So how did she use it? Tell me some examples. Well, remember how much she loved that magic school platform? Oh, yeah. She was really into that. She started using it to create these interactive games and simulations for her language lessons. I bet the students love that. They did. They were way more engaged and motivated when they could learn through play. Learning by doing it's the best way. Absolutely. And she also got creative with using chatbots. Chatbots? How did that work? Well, she created one that would help students with basic conversation skills, you know, like greetings, introductions, asking for directions. Oh, that's cool. It's like having a virtual language partner. Exactly. And it takes the pressure off, you know, for students who might be shy about practicing with a real person. That makes sense. So they can build their confidence before they have to actually talk to someone. So she really personalized the learning experience. Yeah. And it made a real difference. Her students were more engaged, their language skills improved, and they even started to see themselves as capable language learners. Wow, that's the dream, right? It is. It really shows how powerful these tools can be in the right hands. Elizabeth sounds like an amazing teacher. She is. And her story really highlights how AI can transform education. Yeah. It's not about replacing teachers. It's about giving them new ways to help their students succeed. 
And it all starts with a willingness to learn and experiment and to see the potential of these new technologies. And to share your journey with others like Elizabeth did. Exactly. So if you're feeling inspired by Elizabeth's story, we encourage you to think about your own learning journey. What tools and technologies could you embrace to enhance your own learning or maybe your teaching? The possibilities are endless. That's right. So keep exploring, keep learning, and keep sharing your discoveries with the world. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into Elizabeth's AI4 ELLT journey. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.